The import web services allow parallel processing. So that is why it is designed for high volume transactions. The normal hire employee will not allow for parallel processing. It will do one at a time. So this is done. Now click on next. Now the next section will be transform. In our outbound EIB, we had said that the transform is optional. But here you see, the transformation type is automatically chosen as the template model. And the template model has been chosen from the web service operation. It has already been chosen from the web service operation and it is higher employee. So we can't change it. We won't change it. We will just click on next and then the deliver. Here the deliver is also chosen for us because the delivery is to be done to workday. And since we chose a web service operation, that is, the delivery option. So we are going to use the delivery method, which is a workday web service operation. By default, it's chosen. And the web service is higher employee web service. So let's review and let's submit it. So creating the EIB is pretty simple and straightforward. So it says that the file type that you are going to use is a web service spreadsheet template. So that is where most of the interesting work will need to be done. So I'll click on OK to save this. Right. So this is an inbound EIB. It has that get data, transform and deliver sections. That is why we know it is an inbound. And the moment you see that the transform is a web service template and the deliver is a web service operation. You know, this is an inbound EIB. Now we have created the EIB. Now, where do we find the Excel spreadsheet that it's talking about? Web Service Spreadsheet Template So we have to go to the Related Actions. You have the option for Template Model. And you can generate the spreadsheet template. Right. Generate the spreadsheet template. The default format is XLSX. You also have the XML option. But remember that even if you choose XML option, you will be able to open it using Microsoft Excel. This was the older version, but you are still able to open it using Microsoft Excel. So select the XLSX format when generating a spreadsheet in Google Drive. What do you recommend using XLSX for X spreadsheet format files over XML? So that's what we will listen to the recommendations. And we will confirm that, yes, this is what we want. Click on Submit. So it will create a background process, and it is trying to generate the Excel spreadsheet model for us. It is going to generate a blank Excel spreadsheet model. Now what happens is in the background, there is a web service operation. A web service operation has many, many different fields, many, many different like options that we need to fill out, especially if it's a big and complicated web service like the higher employee web service. Right. So this will have many different sections, many different processes, but the basic, the key to do it is to enter all the relevant information in the sections that are important. So we go into the higher employee. Let's go to the folder. Let's create a copy of this. So right here is the Hire Employee Web Service. 
Let's create a copy and let's call it as a template. OK. Let's open up this particular Excel spreadsheet and see how it looks. Now we have to enter the data as per this particular format in Excel. OK, this is a simplified version for accessing the web service. If you are not familiar with the web service, this is the spreadsheet that you can use to enter data for the web services. OK. Otherwise, we will use a different method. Like we can use directly web services and enter the data. So here you see that this web service operation is designed to hire an existing applicant into an employee position or job using the hire employee business process. Right. This is what it is designed to do. So there are several sub-processes that are available in the hire business process. Remember we have the proposed compensation. Hire, create workday account. Edit Workday Account. Those are the many, many different actions that you can perform on those business processes. So what we are going to do here is we are going to give a processing instruction for our web service operation. So the processing instruction is Manual Processing, Automatic Processing, Run Now, and Run Now with Automatic Processing. The option that we will choose is Run Now. OK. So this is actually going to be automatically complete. Now, what are the other options? Manual processing is, it will start the business process. But if there are manual steps, like maybe proposed compensation, hire, create workday account, edit workday account, it will go to the individual role assignee for those tasks, one by one, just like a manual workday process. Right. If you want that, if you want to go through all the manual approvals and so on, you can go through this particular process. The other option is automatic processing. If you are clicking on automatic processing, then that means it will bypass all the approvals. All those approvals will be automatically completed. Okay automatically completed. It will not wait, it will not stop for somebody to do those tasks manually. Right. It will not stop at that. There is a reason for this. Let's say you are loading 500 workers using this spreadsheet. Right, you're loading 500 workers. If it is, if you have to go for manual approval for each of those steps, then what happens? You are not. Are you reducing your, I mean the task, or you are just increasing it? Isn't it? You're just increasing the work for everybody. You are going through the manual process where somebody has to go in and approve it 500 different times. So for bulk data loads using EIBs, we do an automatic processing. We do not go through the individual approval process for each and everything. If you want, you may write. You can go for manual processing. We select on manual processing, then it will go to each and every person for their approval. The run now and run now with automatic processing are here for backward compatibility. We no longer use Run Now and Run Now with automatic processing right. We do not use it anymore. These are the new options, Manual Processing and Automatic Processing. So we are going to do this for the other one. The approvals are taken prior to the hiring process. Maybe yes, but during the hire process in Workplane nobody has to do the approval. If there is a, let's say, consolidated approval, approval by manager, etc., 
etc., that doesn't have to be done. If it is an if you select automatic processing to load the data. So yeah, I mean, if you are concerned about that, that okay, then this, then how does this work? Well, if you, you can choose manual processing. That is absolutely fine. If you do that, then it will follow all the human actions. It will go through for each and every approval. Like some organizations want to do it right. They don't want to skip the approvals. So yeah, you can do it like this as well, not an issue, right? Then it will just start the process. It will trigger 500 processes, or maybe 400 processes, or how many you are doing. And then it has to. It will flow through the approval process, proposed compensation, everything. It will flow through the normal process, okay. So it depends. What is it that you want? So typically when we do bulk loads, we use automatic processing, because that is the whole purpose of using the EIB, to load the data right to have bulk loads. Now proposed compensation hire. These are subprocesses. So we will say, skip processing when the step is marked optional. So anyway, we are not doing it. So I will mark all these other processes as optional. Skip processing when the step is marked optional. In this particular example, we are not going to do it. Discard or exit validation error. So if there is any validation error, so you can exit the process. You can discard right. So you can choose, yes, you want to discard, or you can choose, don't try continuing and do it. You can also enter a processing comment. You can enter a comment for the hire. Freeform comment regarding the business process. So you can say, hired using an EIB spreadsheet, right? So for each of the workers who are going to be hired, we will have a comment like hired using an EIB spreadsheet. Okay, this is a standard comment that you can use for all the works. Now comes individual web service operations. The first one is the hire employee. This is where we are actually going to enter the information. So now I want you to pay attention to how we are doing it. So first one is the spreadsheet key. Right, the first value is the spreadsheet key. Now, in the spreadsheet key you can enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, but the spreadsheet key has to be unique within this particular spreadsheet. Okay. And the spreadsheet key is the linkage if you are going to enter additional information regarding that particular hire in some other websites, some other spreadsheets. Like, for example, if you're going to do compensation as well, right, you're going to assign compensation. So the spreadsheet key for this employee here should match the spreadsheet key for the employee.